Welcome to the way of mastery. Welcome to the way of mastery. to the way of mastery on Facebook Live. Hello, mighty companions. It is Earl Purdy, and I'm here to do the way of mastery with you. It's great to have my mighty companions here with me tonight because we're going to do the fourth key to the kingdom of heaven, to the kingdom of heaven happiness, which is surrender. This is the way of mastery. This is Earl Raj Purdy. I'm so glad to be here with you tonight. It always turns me on. It's great to see you. It's great to have you here. Hello, Alita. Hello, Susan. My niece, Tosh, I love you. Good to have you online. CJ, lusciousness, I love you. Glad to have you online. Sybil, Stella, Jerry, Demola, all of you mighty companions. <clears throat> Myrna, Marion, C, Kim, Marjorie, Carrie, Kara, Kim, uh, all of you mighty companions. We've got a lot of wonderful mighty companions online with us tonight. So, Let's start out giving each other some love by sending each other a lot of heart emojis right now so that we can love each other up. How about that? Send out some love to each other right now. Would you do that for me? That would be awesome. That's great. I love that. Don't forget to comment, to share, and to like the video. And remember, we are live, you all. I'm here with you live. I can see your comments. I'll respond when I can. And we have each other. And we're and we are good, getting a chance to go to go really, really, really deep into some incredible, powerful material tonight. Danielle, it's good to see you online. Carrie, it's great to see you online. And we're in the way of mastery. Page 62. Page 62. In the way of the heart. And the way of the heart. In the Way of Mastery, on page 62, we're going to talk about the fourth key. We're going to talk about the fourth key. And the fourth key to happiness is surrender. You don't have to believe the ideas. You don't have to accept the ideas. You don't have to welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas are going to be hard to believe. Some of the ideas are going to be startling. Connor, yeah, brother. Um, and I want you to know that it's about us hearing it and applying the ideas and using the ideas. It's the use of the ideas that's going to give the ideas meaning to us. And it's the use of the ideas that are going to show us that the ideas are true. So my job, my function, my task is to bring the material to life. That's what I want to do. I want to be a living conduit of the spirit of God, of love coming to you. So let's get started. The fourth key is surrender. Surrender. The first key is desire. The second key is intention. The third key is allowance. And don't forget, all of these all of these previous uh, classes are on YouTube and also on Facebook Live. So just Google me on YouTube and also there on Facebook Live. So if you missed the first three keys, they are online, okay? Surrender, 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 surrender. It says, as these three stages mature. So what are the three stages that we're talking about? The three stages that we're talking about is desire, and what is the desire that we should have? It, uh, the way of mastery says that the desire that we should have 
is the desire to be what and who we were created to be by God. The intention is us actually doing everything in our power to focus in on being as we were created to be, being who we are authentically. And the third key is allowance. At some level, I've got to be willing to allow it and to allow the happiness. And then the fourth key is surrender. So what does surrender mean? Well, surrender means there is no longer any restlessness. What does surrender mean? Surrender means that you know through every fiber of your being that there is no one here living a life. It means you know that there is life flowing through the body, mind, personality for as long as it lasts. What does surrender mean? It's, it's in surrender, that's where you have the mystical transformation. You go through a mystical transformation when you surrender. That's when your mystical transformation is culminated in surrender. And that's where your mystical transformation is completed. So when is your mystical transformation completed? It's completed in surrender. It says in the way of mastery, it is here that you understand the meaning of the teaching. I live, yet not I, but it's the Christ within me. It's the love within me that's dwelling as me. So surrender is a stage. So what stage is surrender? Uh, surrender is a stage in which perfect peace is the foundation. So what is the foundation of surrender? The foundation of surrender is perfect peace. But that is not talking about perfect passivity. We, when we say perfect peace, we're not talking about perfect inactivity. When we are talking about perfect peace, we're actually talking about more activity. See, when you're in perfect peace, you find yourself, as long as you are in the world, being busier and busier and you begin to see that you're being asked to do more and more when you are in the process of surrendering you become even more responsible so what does that mean it means that eventually you come to see that because you are christ you are the living extension and expression of God. You are the living extension and expression of God. You are God expressing God's self as you, as love. You are the Christ. The Christ is the one love that has been created by the one love that is God. You see, we are not our personalities, we are not our bodies, we are not our conditioning, we are not our patterns, we are not our habits, we are not our past learnings, we are not our past experiences, we are the extension of love, we are God, we are the Christ, we are all the Christ, the Christ, the love is us, is in us. So that means you are responsible for the whole of creation. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's really saying you come to see that you cannot think a thought. You're going to get to the point that you realize that you can't even think a thought without disturbing the stars that are the furthest off. It is that responsibility from which you have shrunk and tried to contain yourself as this little tiny myopic piece of foam, all because you have feared being responsible for the whole. You are more than you think you are. You are greater than you think you are. You are more than you think you are. You are greater than you think you are. You are more than you think you are. You are greater than you think you are. It's time for you to own up to being more than you can imagine that you are. So, but the way of the heart does what? We are going to follow the way of the heart. What is it that the way of the heart does? The way of the heart corrects your perception. So the Course in Miracles teaches that another term for, per for perception is interpretation. 
So when you say you perceive something, you're really saying, I am interpreting something. When you say you perceive me, what you're really doing is interpreting me. And you are interpreting me based on your past learning. So when you see me, you're just seeing your own learning. You are calling me a man because you learn to see me as a man. You are calling me a man because that's your interpretation of me. So perception is learning. Perception is interpretation. So whatever you perceive is nothing but a meaning that you have given to what you are looking at. So when you follow the way of the heart, it's going to correct your perception, which is what? Correcting your interpretation uh, so that you come to recognize that your greatest joy, your greatest fulfillment, what is your greatest joy? What is your greatest fulfillment according to the way of mastery? It's to be holy and deliberately being a person that's accepting responsibility for the whole of creation. I, and creation is the extension of love. When we say creation, we're talking about the extension of love. So my greatest responsibility is to, to accept responsibility for being the extension of love in this world. I'm willing to be a conduit for the extension of love in this world. I'm willing to be a conduit. You are willing to be a conduit. Remember, mighty companion, I'm talking to you and I'm talking to me. So I'm going to call you your name and I'm going to call my name. So why should you be responsible for the whole of creation? Why? Because you suddenly realize you are not the maker, you are not the doer. First, you got to realize you are not the ultimate maker and you are not the ultimate doer. That's what allows you to accept responsibility for anything and everything because you and through you, all power upon heaven and earth is made to flow. So what, what, are, we, what are we just told? All power under heaven and earth is made to flow to manifest the love of God. You suddenly realize you're not the maker, you're not the doer, that you can accept responsibility for anything and everything. You can accept responsibility for anything and everything because through you, through you, all power, all power under heaven, under heaven and earth is made to flow. You are here to manifest the love of God. You are here to manifest the love of God. So in short, it is in God's hands. Everything is in God's hands not yours. Everything is in God's hands, not yours. Everything is in God's hands. Everything is in the Creator's hands of surrender. What is the statement of surrender? The statement of surrender is, not thy will, not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, but, not my will, but yours be done, Creator. God, not my will, but, not my will, but yours. I want your will to be done in my life. God, I want your will to be done in my life. My creator, I want your will to be done in my life. I'm asking for my creator's will to be done in my life. I'm asking for my creator's thought to be done in my life. I'm ask for my, I ask for my creator's love to be done in my life. I ask for my creator's mind to be done in my life. I ask for my creator's mind to be done in my life. I ask for my creator's love to be done in my life. I ask for God's will to be done in my life. The statement of surrender is, not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, not my will, not my little ego will, not my little will that doesn't really know anything about what's going to happen two hours from now. Not my will, but thine be done. So just take a second, take a minute to say that to yourself. Not my will, but thine be done. 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 Take a moment to say that to yourself. Not my will, but thine be done. God's will for me is perfect happiness. I will God's will for me. So in whatever way that feels comfortable for you to say that, take a moment right now to say, not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, but I want God's will to be done in my life right now. I want the will of God, which is the will of love, which is the will of freedom, 
which is the wheel of abundance, which is the wheel of health and healing and joy and life and freedom. I'm asking for that will to be done in my life right now. I'm asking for the will of love, the will of God, the will of light to be done, the will of truth to be done in my life right now. So does that, does that begin to make sense to you? Do you see how doing that, do you see how it changes how you have even been taught to interpret the teachings of Jesus, Yeshua? Desire, intention, allowance, surrender. The four keys to happiness are what? Desire, intention, allowance, surrender. Desire, intention, allowance, surrender. I desire it. I intend it. I allow it. I surrender. I desire it. I intend it. I allow it. I surrender. I desire. I intend. I allow. I surrender. I desire, I intend, I allow, I surrender. Let's say it together. I desire, I intend, I allow, I surrender. 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 But it is a surrender it's a, it's a surrender into a way of being that the world can never know. You, you and I are talking about surrendering in a way that the world, that the fear-based mind doesn't know anything about. It is surrender into a way of being in which you may never receive an Oscar for your acting. But this surrender is a way of being in which your consciousness becomes totally open. This surrender is you having a way of living and a way of existing in which your consciousness becomes totally open to your union with all of creation. I am allowing my consciousness to become open to uniting with all of creation. I am open to my consciousness. I am open to my consciousness becoming totally open to my union with all of creation and you are part of all of creation. So I'm open to my consciousness joining with your consciousness. Are you willing for your consciousness to join with my consciousness? Are you willing for your consciousness, your mind to join with the mind of all of us? So what are the, some of the things that's going to happen when you really feel your connection with everything? Do you know that when you feel your connection with everything, you are going to talk with a leaf as it falls from a tree. You will see the soul of the kitten or the dog that you pet. When you really join your consciousness with everything, you will find yourself talking with angels and you will find yourself talking with masters. And you will be also involved in board meetings, but it will be a different kind of board meeting. It will be board meetings in the high conference rooms. So what will you know when you truly surrender and allow your consciousness to open up and to totally join with all of creation? Well, you will know that the body man you once thought was yours is little more than a temporary teaching device. Okay? Your body is a temporary teaching device. Your body and, and my body, our bodies are temporary teaching devices. My body is a temporary teaching device. My body is a temporary teaching device. Your body is a temporary teaching device. Um, your body is a tool to be picked up and your body is a tool to be picked up and utilized at God's direction. So let me get this straight. Uh, my body, I'm not my body. I'm not my body. I'm free. My body is a temporary teaching device. So your body is a temporary teaching device. Uh, it's a tool for you to pick up 
but you want to utilize your body at the direction of God, under the direction of love, under the direction of spirit, you want to utilize your body. And then at some point, you're going to put that body aside when his usefulness is done and the people around you are going to call that you having died or made a transition. So really death is nothing but putting aside the body when this usefulness is done. The, the death is nothing but laying down your temporary learning device when the usefulness of the temporary learning device is done. Uh, hello, Joanne. Hello, Kathy. Um, so I want to think about that a minute. If you take out a jack to change a flat tire, it is a temporary tool, right? And when you change the tire, what do you do? You put the jack down. So your body is not you. Your body is a temporary teaching device. Your body is a temporary teaching learning device. But when you really get smart, when you really learn what surrender means, you're going to ask that your body be used by God. You're going to ask that your body be used by the Creator at the Creator's direction. And then you know that one day you're going to put the body aside when His usefulness is done. So the body's usefulness is in really taking you beyond the body and reminding you that you are more than the body. So that even when it is time to go through the transition called death, when it's time for you to go through the transition called death, nothing will disturb your peace. So if a person is conscious, if a person is aware, if a person is aware that they are the extension and the creation of God, if you are aware that you are love incarnate, if you are aware that you are Christ incarnate, if you are aware that you are love incarnate, if you are aware that you are freedom and spirit incarnate, then the idea of death will not disturb your peace because you know that anybody that has appeared to die has not really died. That person has just merely laid down their temporary teaching learning device called the body because for whatever reason, which you may or may not understand, the usefulness of that body is done. So no matter what it looks like, nobody really dies. No matter what it looks like, we are eternal beings. No matter what it looks like, when your body dies, you do not die. You do not die because your body appears to die. You never die. Your true self never dies. So surrender to the idea that you would love to have your life, your being, your body, utilized by God, utilized by love for the healing and the blessing and the happiness and the freedom of all of creation. I am, I am saying to the universe right now, I'm saying to my creator right now, not my will but thine be done. I want you to use my body for the healing and the love of all of creation. That is what I want my body to be used for, for happiness and joy and healing for all of creation. I'm going to surrender to the idea of my body, my mind, and my being being used by my creator, something greater than me. I'm ready to be used for something greater than my own little personal ego desires that are never really satisfying anyway, except temporarily. It's time for us now to become more mature spiritual souls. It's time for us now to put away childish things because we're no longer childish spirits and souls. It's time for us to take our awareness to a brand new level of consciousness. And I realize that some of the things that I'm saying are going to not resonate with some people that may be listening right now, but that's okay. Because there are a lot of people right now that what I'm saying is totally resonating with where you are right now. So then, you, do you want to know what the way of mastery says next? It says, <clears throat> as the body dies, now what does that mean? Simply that your attention begins to release itself. So the body dying, it's nothing but your attention beginning to release itself from the body, just like the hand of a carpenter is released from the handle of a hammer as the hammer is laid down on the table on the way to dinner. You will be able to watch the process with total equanimity and joy. That was a mouthful. So what did that just say? 
that when your body dies one day, it's going to be simply you turning your attention to in another direction and releasing your attention, your consciousness, your being from the physical body the same way that a carpenter would just lay a hammer down on the table when it was finished using the hammer. You are going to lay your body down the way a carpenter would lay a hammer down on the table. And when you have a conscious death or a conscious transition, you will be able to watch the whole process with joy. So when you have a correct perception of death, death will not make you feel sad. Death will actually make you feel joyful because you know that there is no such thing as death. And it just means that that soul has no longer a need for the body. And that soul is ready to go to another level and to place their attention somewhere else outside of this physical plane that we're in right now. All hands on deck. That's right, Pamela. And Demola says, my infinite creator, use this lovely communication device of mine to let your eternal love always flow and extend through me to all of creation. Kim says, use me, dear Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Kathy says, I surrender to being awake. Thy will be done. Joanne says, this is totally resonating with her. Uh, Shahira, good evening. Glad to have you here. And all the rest of you mighty companions that are silently watching. So, <clears throat> so then what you're going to do in the transition called death, we're being told right now the stages you go through when you make transition, the transition called death. Uh, the way of mastery says you will watch your spirit disengage from the body. You will watch your body crumble into lifelessness so that all of your attention becomes totally focused in a totally new dimension. So let me get this straight, that <clears throat> when it's time for me to make my transition called death, I'm going to realize that my, I'm not my body and my body is a temporary teaching learning device. This temporary teaching learning device, if I'm using it correctly, I'm using it under the direction of God, which means I've been living my life under the direction of my creator, and I will have the body as long as it's useful. There will come a time when it's time to turn my being, my consciousness, away from the physical plane, away from the body, and so I'm going to watch my spirit disengage from my body, whether, whether I make the transition in a totally healthy way or let's say I make my transition through an accident or uh, through an illness or through some act of violence, whatever the form of what appears to be my death, the truth is I'm going to watch my spirit disengage from my body, sort of like the movie Ghost, if you've ever had a chance to watch the movie Ghost. It's something like that. You... You disengage from the body. You watch the body crumble into lifelessness because it's time for you to focus your attention in a brand new dimension. So everybody that looks like they've died, whether it was a child up to the oldest person you know, they never died in reality. They just disengaged from the body and their attention became focused in a totally new direction. This perception of death this, this, this perception of surrendering will give you a joyful, peaceful feeling about death and transition. So that if you have loved ones who have made their transition, if you have loved ones who have quote unquote died, use this interpretation and it will give you more peace. A true interpretation, a true perception always gives you a lot more peace. So everyone that you love, that you think has died, they are not dead because they were never their bodies. They were never their temporary communication device. So my mother has made her transition called death, but I never accepted that my mother was dead. My mother's body 
was laid to rest. My father's body was laid to rest. My brother's body was laid to rest. My sister's body was laid to rest. But my brother Joe is very much alive. My sister Erlene is very much alive. My father Joe, he's very much alive. My mother Georgia, she's very much alive. All of my relatives, all of my friends that have made their transitions, I, because of my spiritual learning, I do not ever say that they are dead in the sense that they no longer exist. And don't you do that either to the people that you love. Um, the only thing that keeps you from communicating with the people that have quote unquote died is your belief that it's not possible to still communicate with them. It's because of your belief that they no longer exist. In order to tap into the invisible spiritual world that's even realer than this world, first of all, you have to believe that it exists because you only perceive what you believe. If you don't believe it, you won't see it. Your perception always witnesses to your beliefs. I'll say that again. Your perception always witnesses to your beliefs. So, <clears throat> so when you leave this plane, when you're no longer here because of what? You fulfilled your purpose. Uh, it's time to move on to the next dimension. But what is this dimension? Well, the way of mastery says, this is a dimension that is so vast that you will be able to look down on this earth plane not unlike the way you might choose to hold a pebble in the palm of your hand. Your consciousness is going to expand so much when you're no longer limited to the body that you will look down on the earth the same way you would look at a rock in your hand. And in one glance, you will see everything about this earth, everything about this dimension here, everything about this pebble. In other words, when you leave the body, there's nothing about this plane that is hidden from you anymore. Take a breath. Trust love. It's time for you to trust love. Trust love. Trust God. That love is everywhere. That be So I want you to take a moment to honor your loved ones. Take a moment to honor those that you love. Take a moment to honor those that you love that are no longer in the body. Take a moment to honor the ones that you love. Remember their loving thoughts. My mother, my father, my sister, my, my brother-in-law, my sister in law, my friends, my cousins, my uncles, my aunts, all of my relatives, all of my friends, my best friend, all of you that are no longer in the body. I do not see you as your body. I see you as the loving extension, the loving creation of God. And you are no longer focused in this plane. And now your attention is focused in another dimension, a greater dimension. Take a breath. When one just love, for love is something that will not ever fail. Love is the essence of the spirit. Sing it, Ricky. That is no my always given. Love always sees the truth beyond. Send out love to your dearly departed friends, relatives. All of those beautiful souls that are no longer in their bodies. Trust 
love will have the final word. Love will have the final word. Mm. June, happy Thanksgiving. And I honor your beauty. I honor all of your beauty. I, I am so grateful to you. This is Thanksgiving. It's coming up this Thursday. And I just want to take a moment to tell each and every one of you, I am so grateful to have you in my life. I'm so grateful to have you as my fellow travelers, my mighty companions on this path back to God, back to love, back to our home. You are a blessing in my life, all of you, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. And so the next paragraph in the Way of Mastery says, I am one that has chosen to assume the responsibility for this pebble called earth. Jesus says, I'm the one that's chosen to assume the responsibility for the earth and all the life that lives on earth. You too, you are going to know the energy and the reality of wrapping your fingers around the entire solar system. And you are going to know what it feels like to become the God or the Savior of a dimension. We are all, listen to this, we are all children of God. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. You are a child of an infinite creator. You are an extension. You are a child of an infinite creator. Thank you. Thank you for all the lovely things that you all are sharing with me. Thank you. Um, so one day you will have all the power and you will know all the power that Jesus demonstrated in all the great spiritual masters. You are going to have all of the power and all of the creativity. Jesus said that everything that he did, we could do and we could do more. All great spiritual teachers say the exact same thing. So, <clears throat> so if you want to start to get in touch with your divine power, if you want to start to get in touch with your spiritual self, your per you're going to have responsibility for your domain, your solar system, your personal dimension. How does that start? Well, it begins by saying this. I and I alone am the source of what I experience and perceive. Say that with me. I and I alone am the source of what I experience and perceive. I and I alone am the source of what I experience and perceive. I and I alone am the source of what I experience and what I see. That's saying I and I alone am the cause of what I experience and perceive. I am not the victim of the world I see. Say that. I am not the victim of the world I see. Thank you, Tosh. There's nobody like you either, baby. I love you. Um, I and I alone am the source of what I experience and perceive. I am not the victim of the world I see. I am not the victim of the world I see. Say that. I am not the victim of the world I see. Now, this next part of this is going to be even more powerful. Say to yourself, everything I experience, everything I experience, I have called to myself. I have called to myself, plain and simple, plain and simple, no excuses, no excuses, no ifs, no ifs, ands, or buts ands or buts. That is the way it is. So let's say this again. I'm going to say it. You repeat it after me. I and I alone am the source of what I experience and perceive. I and I alone am the source of what I experience and perceive. Now say to yourself, I am not a victim of the world I see. Say it. I am not a victim of the world I see. Next, repeat this after me. 
Everything I experience, I have called to myself. Together, everything I experience, I can hear you. Everything I experience, I have called to myself. Plain and simple, plain and simple. No excuses, no excuses, no ifs, ands, or buts. What? No ifs, ands, or buts. That is the way it is. Together, that is the way it is. Take a breath. Everything I experience, I have called to myself, plain and simple, no excuses, no ifs, ands, or buts. That is the way it is. We are here to be the perfect givers of love. Receivers of love. And love will have the final word. Love is going to have the final word. Love will have the final word. Thank you, Ricky Byers. So if you want to get that music, that's Ricky Byers, B-Y-A-R-S, and Google that, and you will find that she has lots of incredible music. So when you do this, what, be, what happens to you? Well, when you finally take responsibility for your experience, recognize you are not a body, know that your body is a temporary learning device, and you surrender your will to God's because you know God loves you, the Creator loves you, that which created you loves you much more than you could ever love you. At that point, you are no longer an immature soul. You will no longer be immature. Uh, your resistance to simply being responsible for your experience. I say that again. Your immaturity will be gone. You are no longer immature. Why? You are not an immature soul because you are finally saying, I'm going to take responsibility for my experience. I'm going to say whether or not I always see it, understand it, or believe it. I'm going to tell myself, I and I alone am the source of what I experience. I'm the cause of what I'm experiencing. I am the cause of what I'm experiencing. I'm definitely the cause of how I see what I'm experiencing. So even if I'm not at the point that I can accept that I am the cause of what I'm seeing, I can definitely at least say I am the cause of how I experience I'm not a victim of my relationships. I'm not a victim of my job. I'm not a victim of my sex. I am not a victim of my gender. 
I am not a victim of my race. I am not a victim of my thoughts. I am not a victim of my feelings. I am not a victim of you. I am not a victim of anything I see. Now I'm going to become an even more mature soul. I'm going to say, everything I experience, I have called to myself. Everything I experience, I have called to myself. Hang in there. <laughs>